<laughs> What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits and inside of this Lightroom and sort of Photoshop tutorial, we're gonna be showing you how to take this photo from here to here inside of Lightroom with just a little bit of Photoshop, super simple at the end, okay? So I've got a vision and it's ready to go. We're gonna grab this image. If you wanna edit along with me, you can go to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos, download this file and edit along and post your version of this edit at Signature Edits Co. So let's hit the intro and get into it. All right, so backstory of this image, it was taken with a 28 mil lens. It was taken at f2.0. ISO was just as low as I could get it. Shutter speed nice and high so that there's no blur. Things were nice and static. And this is actually a self-portrait. So I did this hike. It was called Ptarmigan Cirque up in Kananaskis National Park in Alberta, Canada. And it was a really, really great hike. I got to the very top. There's this big mountainous bowl, like where there is an ancient glacier that is long gone. And inside of this bowl, the sunset was just hitting the top of these mountains, you can see. And I didn't have a tripod, and I was by myself at the top here. And so I had to actually find a rock, which is why these rocks are in the foreground. Uh, I had to find a rock that was about the right height and the right sort of angle that I could set my camera on as a makeshift tripod, and then set it on a timer. So I set it on a 10 second delay timer and then a burst of five photos. So basically what would happen, I'd hit the shutter button, I had it kind of framed up the way I wanted, I had the exposure and the focus hopefully right. It's hard to check when you don't exactly know where you're going to be standing. And then I would run as fast as I could, get into position, and then it would go take five photos and I would just try and do like some different variations of poses as that was happening. And by variations of poses, I'm not a model. So I would just look like that. <laughs> That's my variation. That's my posing tutorial for you. Uh, but as you can see, it turned out okay. Things weren't quite perfectly centered because I had no way of being able to tell. And I didn't quite nail the focus on me, which is a bit of a bummer, but is what it is. So overall, I had to be in a rush because the light was changing so fast and that little bit of ridge that was getting covered in sun was leaving quite quickly. So here's the original photo. I'm going to start by just adjusting the crop a little bit so that I'm in the center instead of off to the right. Now in film, I don't know if the same thing is called the same word in photos, but there's a thing called looking room. And essentially, whichever way the subject is looking in your photo, you want to have a little bit more space on that side of the image than behind them. So you can see I'm looking in this direction from left to right. So it's better to have a little bit more space on the right. So you can see I'm not perfectly centered here. And if you want to change the overlay of your crop, you can hit O and it will give you different options. So you can see I'm just not quite in the center, but that's okay because I have a little bit of looking room. It'll feel better. So that's that. I'm going to hit R again to get rid of this once I have it back where it was. And then I'm going to raise my exposure up. And it's a really basic edit, honestly. We're just going to lower the shadow, um, lower the highlights, raise the shadows. We're basically just like going ahead and making this photo as flat as we can to try and recover and just make the foreground a little bit brighter. Drop the exposure back down. And you can see here's the difference. Here's the very beginning and here's after. So we've just brightened up the foreground without losing the sky. We can even darken things a little bit. And then I'm going to hit K on my keyboard and go to select subject. That's going to select me, and I'm just going to raise the highlights and the whites on me, just so I pop a little bit more off the background. And then, because I know that I'm not in focus, I'm super blurry, we're going to add some texture, like a monumental amount of texture to try and make it seem like I was in focus. Lower the contrast a little bit. Add some clarity. There we go, that's getting better. And a little bit of dehaze, maybe. Raise the sharpness. And then because I've added so much, like crushing those blacks and shadows, I'm gonna have to raise that back up. So we'll raise the blacks a little bit, raise the shadows a bit until it feels kind of natural. So that might be a little too far. We're gonna have to zoom out to see. Yeah, it looks like I overdid it a little bit. Like I almost look like a cutout. I'm slightly too textured or sharp or whatever. So I'll play around with a couple things. One, we could drop our shadows back down. And Lightroom is like really thinking about life right now. So that's why there's the delay. So like that, I could also maybe dial back on my clarity a little bit and maybe increase my contrast slightly. Okay. That's not so bad. Maybe raise the whites a little bit. So here's before adding that and after. So it might be a little too far, 
we can always tweak that later. For now, I think it looks not too unnatural. Then I'm going to go into my tone curve, add a little bit of an S curve just to get some pop back. And I'm actually going to leave the shadows up and just focus on raising the highlights. You can see that's adding pop to our image without making the shadows too dark. Play around with the mid-tones here. See what feels right. Probably around there. Feels pretty good. So here's before that and after that. And at this point, honestly, it's pretty close to being ready to head into Photoshop. I have this vision in my in my theoretical mind of having like stars in behind me because the sky is kind of boring, but it's also dark enough that I feel like it would sort of fit like if you had a star overlay in there. So we're going to try that. First, I'm going to play around here, maybe make the blacks a little blacker because we want it to feel like, okay, if this were nighttime and there were stars in the sky, like what would the temperature of it be? Things would probably be a little bit cooler. And we'd maybe even have a little bit of a green cast to the, to the photos because the star's light is kind of like a greenish blue. So we want to add some of that somewhere around there. Okay. So here's our original and here is our edit. It's not perfect. We might come back and tweak a few things. Like for example, we could go even a little bit further with the blues. And I'm not worried about the sky in this because I know I'm replacing this guy. So I can make the blues a little bit more, I don't know what color that is, aqua, <laughs> aqua and make the aquas maybe a little bit more blue. Somewhere around there. Purples. Magentas. Okay, I feel like that's pretty darn close. I'm just looking at the foreground. I'm ignoring the top, like ignoring the sky. I'm saying, okay, does this look like it could have been taken at night? Obviously, it's still a little bit too bright. So I can maybe drop the shadows down a bit. Somewhere around there. Now, with nighttime light, you're going to have like more of a flat light. It's going to be dark, but it's going to be more flat because you don't have direct sunshine, right? You just have maybe the light of the moon, which isn't always flat, but hopefully you got my point. So something around there. And of course, we could add color casts. We could do all sorts of things, but I think that's about close enough for us to try this. So now there's two ways we could do this. We could e export the photo and import it into Photoshop, or we could go edit and or photo edit in Photoshop. Now, honestly, this is going to be slower on your computer and it's going to be harder. So you can try it, see if it works. But if you find your computer's not handling it, you just export the file exactly as is, and then you can open it in Photoshop that way too. So Photoshop's going to wait and think. Now, very easy edit. We're just going to go up to where it says image or edit, edit rather, and select sky replacement. Now, I don't know if this is exactly the same for every single version of Photoshop. If it's there or somewhere else, you might have to Google that. And you can see that we've got these different styles. And Photoshop is automatically going to just search and find. They have some pre-built ones, so we could have a really epic sunset if we wanted. It doesn't feel that real, but we could play around. It's super easy, hey? You just select the one you want, and then you can adjust these things. I normally find turning foreground lighting down because it's never right. And then you adjust the brightness to kind of fit the scene. So I don't know, something like that. And then add your color adjustment. That's going to blend the foreground to match the background. Maybe take our brightness back down and brighten the whole image up. Like that would be actually a pretty cool edit. And then you can even move this around. So if you grab it, you can click and move the sunset around and you can adjust the scale. Right, so that's actually pretty cool. Like we could do something like that and probably get away with it. We'd have to make some slight adjustments because now this is too dark for what a sunset would feel like, but that's an option. So what we're gonna do is go to a site called unsplash.com and just search for starry sky. That might not be how you spell starry, but it worked for me. And we're just gonna download a couple of these. So you can just right click and download. And Unsplash is a really cool site if you've never used it before. All these images you can use for commercial purposes and use them wherever you want. So grab a couple of those. I've already, just to save some time, I downloaded two of them. You go into Sky, and then we're going to hit this little plus icon. You navigate to wherever you downloaded them. So I've got these three that I downloaded. I've already imported them just to, again, save on time. And then we can go down here. And it may or may not show up. <laughs> I can't exactly remember where I have them. There they are. Okay, so first off, we're going to just add this guy right here. We're going to adjust the scale a little bit because I don't want these clouds at the bottom. Something kind of like this. Looks okay. I'm going to adjust the temperature to match. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more blue. 
something like that. Take my color adjustment up. And then this is just like a matter of figuring out what feels best, what matches. So we can maybe take our brightness down a little bit. And it's just saying, okay, what would the sky actually have looked like if there were stars in the sky at this point? So how bright would it have been? Probably, probably would have been darker, more like that. It's looking a little bit purple. I don't know if I totally mind that because it kind of matches the red, but we might need to just play with our white balance a little bit. Somewhere around there. And then we can play with our foreground lighting. I personally find that turning it down looks good. And then your edge lighting just depends on the image. But I think turning it down like that, generally the foreground, like down here, when I say foreground, this is like low part of the horizon just behind the mountains, tends to be brighter because it's like catching the last rays of the sunset. So that's why I'm turning that down. If you turn it up, I just don't feel like it feels as accurate or natural. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And then Photoshop's gonna make this sky replacement group. And I can actually turn that on and off. And you can see it doesn't fit too badly. But I'm gonna take it one step further because I find in general, Photoshop does an okay job, but it's never like, whoa, that looks so real. So I'm gonna select my background layer again, go up to edit. Sky replacement, and we're going to do it again with a different sky. That's the hack. So this time, we're going to navigate down to this other one I grab. And that looks so real, doesn't it? <laughs> and we're going to do kind of the same thing. So I'm going to start by just adjusting the scale, see what I can get away with. With this one, that's about it. But I'm not actually adding this one because I think the sky looks good. I'm adding this one because I just want to get more stars in the sky compared to our other uh, sky replacement that we added. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try and align the brightness with kind of the scene, probably around there. It's too saturated, so we could adjust that later. But for now, let's just take our color adjustment up, play with our foreground lighting, our edge lighting, and maybe warm it up a little bit because we've got such a nice warm mountainscape there. It just needs to match. Okay, that's feeling pretty close. I'm no expert, so I'm just eyeballing it. I'm a simple man. Okay, so that's before and after, and then we also have this guy, before and after. So I like the colors of this one better, but I also want more stars going on in this actual shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one on top. I'm going to go to our blend mode, and I'm actually going to just play around here. And just see, I think luminosity is going to be our best bet, and that's going to just allow us to take all of those bright white points, because luminosity is basically letting anything that is brighter through onto the lower layer. So instead of showing everything, which is normal, it's gonna say, okay, all the dark stuff is darker than the layers underneath it, we're, we're gonna just hide that. So we're gonna head down to luminosity. And then I'm not saying that's perfect, it's obviously not. We can take our opacity and take it down. Cool. And then this lower sky replacement, you can play around as well. I found that multiply sometimes looks cool. Because our sky underneath isn't blown out, what it's doing is it's just kind of multiplying those colors and it'll give us a more natural sort of feel in theory. So I'm gonna copy this whole group and not do it that way because I want it in the exact same position. So I could try right clicking and see if I can duplicate the group. There we go. Okay, so this one I'm gonna to set to normal. I'm going to take my opacity way down, somewhere on there. This one's set to multiply. I'm gonna take the opacity down on that too. And then this one has the additional stars. Cool. So now I can just play around with a combination of these to see what feels best. So the one thing that you might be noticing is that the light doesn't quite match. This is more purple than down here. This is, it just doesn't match. So a couple different ways that we can play with that once we get our sky sort of where we want it will be one just to literally mask out this part of the background. So if you hit L on your keyboard, you can grab the lasso. And all of this area that's in the shadow, we're just going to roughly grab it. Hit Command-C or Control-C on your keyboard to copy it. And Command-V if you're on a Mac. I think Control-P if you're on a PC to paste it. So now we can adjust this layer independently. So you can see if I shut that off, we've just got the bottom part. Make sure it's selected. Go up to Image, Adjustments, and we can try Hue Saturation. And take it so that it feels more purple. So that's one option you could try. Now, of course, it's grabbing my jacket, so I don't want to take it too far. We're going to maybe take it to like minus, eh, say like plus three, just really subtle change. So here's before and here's after, like very subtle. 
And then we can do the same thing. We're just going to lasso the rocks at the bottom because that's what's really saturated. We can grab my pants because there's not much saturation in them. They're just black for the most part. Okay. Grab that. Command C and Command V. Same thing. Make sure that layer's on top or you won't see what it's doing. And go image, adjustments, hue, play around and just try and get it to match the sky. So probably around there. And we can even play with the lightness and just darken it down. Okay, so that layer is obviously showing up. We have to blend it. So we're gonna hit E on our keyboard to grab our eraser. Make sure our brush is set to hardness zero. I like to have the size nice and big, but you can adjust the size using the keys next to the P on your keyboard. Those like brackety things. And then you can take your opacity down a little bit and that'll allow you to kind of go over it without it making such a huge massive change right away. Okay, now what I like to do once I've got that feathered in, hit Command T on your keyboard and then you can hold down Shift. Sometimes you can get away with like expanding it a little bit. In this case, that's not gonna work, so we'll just undo that. But basically we have this weird color shift where it's not quite consistent all the way over. So again, we're gonna just adjust our opacity there we go. Okay, now the last thing that I feel like is sort of lacking in this particular edit is maybe just a little bit more pop, having me stand out from the background a little bit more. So there's two ways to do this. The first would be to grab these and assuming we're done with them, we could right click them and merge them all. That's gonna make them into just one photo. Bam. And then we can copy this and duplicate it. So copy paste is what I did. You can also right click and just go duplicate layer. I'm gonna grab this, set it to multiply. You can see it's added a lot of pop to the image, <laughs> but you also can't see anything. So I'm gonna go down here to where it says levels. We're gonna grab this midtones thing, grab it and take it down towards the shadows and grab the highlights and take that down towards the midtones. So now rather than like totally clipping our image, we've just added some pop. You can see it in the mountains, like the mountains look really good like that, but the rest of the image maybe not so much. So we're gonna hit okay. And you can see before and after. That's good, except for the fact that now I'm like really, really dark. So again, same thing. We're gonna just go over with our eraser, hit E on your keyboard if you need to select it. And there's two different ways to do it, right? You could erase it like that, or just to save some time and maybe be a bit more accurate, you can go over to this thing here, select object selection and click and drag. And it will think and say, hey, that's your object. I'll say, yes, yes it is. So I could just delete that and now we're not affecting it as much, or at all, <laughs> right? So now I'm really popping off the background a little bit more. Our entire image looks better. We got some nice pop. Things are matching. We can, again, go to this background layer and adjust the hue and saturation of that, or the color balance. So we can take it towards magenta a little bit, towards blue a little bit, just match the sky a little bit more. Cool, I'm going to just merge those again. I can always hit Command-Z or Control-Z on a PC just to undo and get back to my other layers. Next, I'm going to go ahead, go to my adjustments, and grab that entire image and maybe just make it brighter. A little bit of brightness, a little bit of contrast, and voila. That's our image. So just for reference, here is before and here is after. So whether or not you like that particular edit, I don't really care. It's just showing you how you can do it if you want to do something similar. And I would love to see your take on this image. So tag at Signature Edits Co. if you decide to edit it so I can check it out and see what you come up with. If this video was helpful, can you do me a big favor? Can you hit that like button and make sure to comment. Like do both if it was helpful, if it was double helpful. Uh, because it really does help get the video out there in front of more people. And that's kind of the goal is just to help people create a community and grow better together. So if this video was helpful, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Grab some free presets in the description if you want them. Otherwise, it's cool. Go create something awesome. Peace.